Now, anyone watching the 2023 Monaco Grand Prix may have got the impression that all is not well at Mercedes. George Russell became public enemy number one, as he routinely asked to be allowed to pass his teammate Lewis Hamilton, but even if this request was denied, it was a peek behind the doors of the Silver Arrows and perhaps the first sign that Russell and Hamilton may be heading towards a collision. Frustration now, ever since Nico Rosberg hung up his gloves having won the 2016 World Championship, there was a growing sense of frustration within F1 fandom at the lack of challenge to Lewis Hamilton's title supremacy. While Max Verstappen tried his best, the Red Bull at that time was simply not quick enough, which means the only realistic challenger would have been Hamilton's Mercedes teammate, Valtteri Bottas. Yet, the Finn never seemed to put up a fight. The pair raced exactly 100 times together as teammates, and within that, Hamilton outqualified Bottas on 69 occasions and was even more dominant during the race itself, finishing ahead of the now Alfa Romeo driver 74 times. The title race reflects that as well. In their first season together, Hamilton finished 58 points ahead of Bottas. In 2018, it was 161, followed by 87 in 2019. In the COVID-hit 2020 campaign, it was 124, and in their final season as teammates, Hamilton finished 161 and a half points ahead of Bottas. Fans then were beginning to grow bored of Mercedes' dominance and Bottas' inability to challenge Hamilton, which made a young Silver Arrows Academy driver down at Williams an even more exciting watch. Russell finally makes the move to Mercedes. George Russell's arrival into the sport is written into F1 folklore, with an email sent to Toto Wolf eventually transforming into a Mercedes seat, but there was a time when even Russell himself felt frustrated with his lack of progress. Russell was sent to Williams in 2019 and impressed from the off in a car that wasn't quick. While he would go over a season and a half without scoring a point, he regularly beat teammate Nicholas Latifi for his ability to get the most out of the car during qualifying. Come 2020, and having had an appearance at Mercedes for the Sakir Grand Prix following Hamilton's positive COVID test, Russell felt he'd done enough at Williams to deserve a shot at Mercedes, but he would have to wait another two years before being given the chance. Midway through the 2021 season, and after a famous clash with Bottas at Imola, Mercedes confirmed that Russell would partner Hamilton for 2022 as Bottas moved on to Alfa Romeo, and as soon as it was confirmed, every non-Silver Arrows fan was beginning to hope that Russell could provide the competition to Hamilton that Bottas had failed to do so. First season Moving to Mercedes would have been a moment Russell had long dreamed of, but we bet he never predicted it going down as it did. The young Brit joined Mercedes at what would turn out to be their worst moment since they rejoined the sport in 2010. The W13 was a dud with both Ferrari and Red Bull producing quicker, better cars, but while it was a bad year for the team, there were plenty of positives for Russell. For a start, he seemed at ease with being in a top team, saying the right things in the media, playing nice with his teammate, and most importantly, staying in the good books of Toto Wolff. On track, it was also a year to remember with Russell, securing his first pole position and later his first F1 win in Sao Paulo. By the end of the year, he'd done what many had thought was impossible. He beat Lewis Hamilton on point. Hamilton, no doubt, focused on the team's problems. Took it well, but speaking after the season, it was clear how much the accomplishment had taken out of Russell. Russell told the F1 Nation podcast, I feel very fortunate to be in this team, teammates with Lewis, learning a huge amount, being pushed to my limits. It's not easy being teammates with somebody as fast and great as he is, but it has been a great year in many regards. What we all do, every single person in this paddock, we're so fortunate to travel the world, us driving the fastest cars in the world around the best tracks in the world. I'm knackered now, but still, there's a lot to look back and be happy about. It seemed then Russell had achieved the impossible, but importantly, had said the right things to keep Hamilton on side. Second season Heading into the second season and anyone within Mercedes hoping 2022 would be a blip was soon proven wrong with the W14 proving just to be as difficult as its predecessor. Now though, everyone was a little more frustrated than they were at the same point last year. Toto Wolff hit out at the team, something he almost never does. 
Hamilton criticised the designers for not listening to him and has still not signed a contract extension, while Russell also seems more agitated that they continue to lack behind their rivals. Following the first six races of the year, they're third in the constructors' standings, already 130 points off leaders Red Bull and facing another trophyless season. After a disappointing opening Grand Prix in Bahrain, the team headed back to the drawing board and came with a heavily modified concept that was supposed to be unveiled at Imola but in the end was pushed back to Monaco but now that the race is over, it's not the upgrade everyone is talking about. Monaco Now on paper, a P4 and P5 finishing spot for Mercedes should be a sign of the progress they've made, including Hamilton's extra point for the fastest lap. It was the most points they've scored in a single season, and yet, Russell's actions almost cost them dearly. Throughout the race, as he was trailing his teammate, he requested that Mercedes order Hamilton to let him pass. Mercedes refused despite Russell's pleas, and this ultimately proved the right call when Russell would go on to have a mistake of the Mirabeau corner and find himself in the runoff area. As he returned to the track, he collided with Sergio Perez who was having a nightmare day of his own and Russell was handed a 5 second penalty by the stewards. Viewers then heard the rare sound of team principal Toto Wolff taking over the team radio. Usually this kind of radio communication from Wolff is reserved for a race win or perhaps a championship, but instead Wolff stepped in to calm down his driver who was by all accounts starting to lose it. Wolff said, He generally puts a lot of pressure on himself, that's his way. We might have to consult and coordinate. I don't think he also really thought we would swap positions. I said we're not even discussing that. Staying calm is important. Without his error, it would have been a podium finish. We were ahead of Ocon. Monaco is not a one-off. Monaco is not a one-off incident either. Flashback to the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix and Hamilton had some particularly interesting words about his teammate. In the race around Jeddah, Russell took fourth while Hamilton finished one spot behind in P5, but the seven-time world champion didn't suggest it was a case of Russell being better on the day, but instead a strategy choice. Hamilton said of the strategy, There was like a 50-50 choice, I chose one way and he chose another. More often than not, the way he went is the wrong one, but it just happened to work, so it could only match his pace than be quicker this weekend, but I'll work hard to make sure we're in a better place next time. Future Predictions and Hamilton's History Hamilton is of course no stranger to teammate battles, and with almost every partner he's ever had, he has at some point got under their skin. His debut season in 2007 almost ripped McLaren apart as he and Fernando Alonso fought for supremacy. When Hamilton was partnered with the usually mild-mannered Jensen Button, he annoyed the 2009 world champion by leaking his telemetry data. Hamilton may have been childhood friends with Nico Rosberg, but that didn't stop the two from developing a rivalry that not only nearly tore Mercedes apart, but as Toto Wolff would go on to reveal in later years, had the pair of them almost losing their jobs. Bottas then comes as the exception, and it should be no surprise that things are starting to get a little more tense between Hamilton and Russell. The question now is, what comes next? The situation is a little different than with Rosberg, for a start, Rosberg and Hamilton were at similar stages in their career, whereas with Russell, Hamilton is the been there, done that seven time world champion who currently has 102 more wins than his teammate. That carries its own way to respect, both from Russell, but also more importantly, from the team. Because if you hooked Wolf up to a lie detector machine and asked him which of his two drivers were more likely to win Mercedes' next world championship, his answer would be Hamilton. No one knows what may come next, but the next few races, and indeed the whole 2023 season, will be crucial to see if Russell becomes the next Bottas or Rosberg. So, keep your eyes peeled for this seemingly strained relationship between the two Mercedes drivers, but in the meantime, make sure you're subscribed so you never miss a release here on the DRS Straight.